Hey guys, Dylan from Noble Records coming at you with another video. This is Heavy Rotations number four. Uh, this is just a video where I weekly talk about kind of what I've been finding, what I've been into, um, and some other stuff. I'm going to be throwing in some different segments and stuff. Just kind of a, a funly, a funly, a fun weekly uh, check-in video. I'm always finding a lot of stuff. So we're going to get into some recent finds, some things I found, and then also um, just some records I kind of want to talk about that I've been listening to. And then I'm, I'm going to do, a, towards the end, uh, a segment. I don't know what I'm going to call it yet, but it's a mail that I get from people. I get a lot of mail. So um, I'm going to show you guys some things that you guys have sent me in the mail and say some thank yous to some people. Um, and so that is coming towards the end. I found a stack of boxes that I um, forgot about that were with some mail that I got during uh, the whole shut down so i'll be going over some of that stuff um first off found this yesterday this is an original press of muddy waters real folk blues uh you guys know muddy waters one of my absolute favorite blues guys try to get everything uh, by him er earlier on in my vinyl collecting life i had a repress of this uh, like an 80s repress and really like this so been looking for an original press for a long time this is a super clean copy just found this yesterday uh, so really excited to get that one in my collection. This is one I found a couple weeks ago. It's been hanging out at the shop, and I just keep forgetting to bring it home. This is a nice, crispy, clean Woodstock promo copy. Now, Woodstock albums are kind of hard to find clean anyways, but the promo copy on top of it, man, it's just got a really clean spine. Um, it's a white label. I'll show you the, the label on it. It is, man, stunning. White label promo, man. Um, I'm a sucker. Sucker for promos. Uh, a lot of people ask why. Um, you know, there's there's a couple a couple different reasons. Uh, first of all, this is just, uh, it's amazing that somebody got this record and they didn't know what it was. They never heard it or whatever. And this was to promote it coming out. Like, that's, that's, that's cool to me also. You know, it's... Um, you know, from the, the earliest iterations of the Stamper, you know. And so, there's a lot of things with it, but I love promos. I'm big into them, and to find a white label promo, this is really, really cool. Um, I've been buying a collection a little bit at a time. I'm trying to do a video on the collection I'm getting. I don't want to say too much, but uh, there's a guy that I know that is has a huge collection of probably 10,000 records from what he says, and he brings me a little bit sporadically here and there, like 200 at a time. And um, he says that at some point I will end up with all of them, but it's like a p pretty much every week I'll get a couple hundred from him. And uh, a lot of it's common stuff, but a lot of it is, is there's there's a, a few in there that are gems that I'm keeping, a very few, but, but that was one. And this is another one that I got from him this week. Uh, this is, uh, you know, epic album. I'll go ahead and talk about this. Um, this is, you know, Allen Brothers Fillmore East. This is a really nice copy, good spine on it. It's 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 fairly clean, which they're tough to find clean. And I about lost it when I pulled out to look at it and saw that white label promo on that thing. Man, sweet. Um, I like I love the Allen Brothers. One of my absolute favorite bands. Um, when I was a kid, it was my first concert. Was Leonard Skinner and the Allen Brothers. Um, this is a funny story if you, if you haven't heard it of the band. Um, someone told me this the other day that, um, they're taking a picture for this. The picture was supposed to look something like that, you know, but, um, you know, them just kind of chilling against the things, you know, but, uh, Dwayne here, uh, had a, uh, hmm, I'm only going to call it a, uh, wacky tobacky cigarette in his hand and uh they're trying to take the picture and the and the, the photographer is telling him he, 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 you can't have that in the picture and so he covered it up in his hand so he's holding it in his hand hiding it and all the rest of the band is laughing at him that is the story behind that cover but that's just one of the in my opinion one of the best live albums ever made and white level promo super sweet here's one that is cool there is the uh, the debate of to keep the shrink on or to not keep the shrink on. 
This is a Neil Young Harvest in the Shrink. Now, this is an original press, the gatefold. It is intact, has all the stuff, all the fixings, and the vinyl's near mint. Um, this is one that I'm going to leave that shrink on there. That is so sweet to find one of the shrink. Because usually, since it's a texture cover, you find, one, find them that are a little discolored and all that stuff. I've never found a copy that's clean. Uh, so that it being, you know, up there with, you know, one of those classic albums that I absolutely love with all my heart and soul. Uh, that's one that I'll, I'll be putting in, in the collection. This is what you call a top copy. Very nice textured cover in the shrink. Just crispy. Crispy, beautiful. But, you know, a lot of people, they, they try to tear the shrink off. That's fine. Um, different strokes for different folks. But some people really like that shrink. I like it when it's in the shrink, and especially if it has a hype sticker. If it's got a hype sticker on it, I'm leaving that shrink on. When it comes to new records, I'm a little different with that stuff. But um, this is another one. Uh, Chicken Shack, except uh, this is on Blue Horizon. That's a really great uh, label. A lot of good blues rock on that label. But uh, Chicken Shack's a great like blues rock band. Um, anything by them I can find, I pick up. This is one I got re recently, super clean copy. Okay, so it's pretty nice. But yeah, really killer uh, blues rock stuff if you're into that. Uh, this is another one, Beggar's Opera I got. Uh, this is a Vertigo Press. But uh, Waters of Change, this is one I've kind of, it's been on my radar, been wanting it, but uh, not not too hurried to get it, but it came in a trade uh, recently, so I got that nice nice Vertigo to add to the collection. This is one Blue Cheer that I didn't have, The Beast is Back, um, kind of cool later Blue Cheer album that they did. Um, you know, there's it's cool on the back, it says special... A metal thanks to Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, Van Halen, Twisted Sister, Judas Priest, and all who have kept the brutes alive. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> to lump Twisted Sister into Led Zeppelin, come on. And Van, Van Halen into Led Zeppelin, it's not even close. It's like Van Halen and Twisted Sister playing Little League compared to going Black Sabbath, in my opinion. But uh, nothing wrong with Little League, just not the same thing. Blue Cheer. Love them. This is a much later 80s record that they did. This is on Mega Force. Pretty cool. Um, pretty cool. So, it's one I've been looking for. This is one I got recently. And um, I don't know that I've ever found a copy of this before. Uh, this is uh, Black Sabbath Headless Cross. I don't know if I like this. I don't like it. Um, I love Black Sabbath. One of those bands that are just um, iconic. Their first four are just flawless but this album is not their first four it is much later uh this is 80s it's that 80s almost hair metal cheesy metal i just i'm not i'm not into this you you might be into this but i'm not but it's still got some juicy licks and it's still black sabbath and there's there's still a little bit of meat on the bones still there so i'm not decided whether i'm gonna keep this or not it's rare it's worth a little bit of money so i might sell it if it comes down to it but um, you know, I'm enjoying it for now. I don't know how out of control I want my lab, my Black Sabbath collection to get. Uh, when Ozzy departed, so did my interest. But, uh, but yeah, that's a cool one that I found and listening to it here and there. Uh, this past week I found some drive-by trucker stuff. Um, as you know, drive-by truckers had, uh, their main draw to me, you, if you know me well, you probably know, is, uh, that Jason Isbell was a member for six years. So I love Jason Isbell. He's one of my favorite songwriters. Um, his stuff with Drive Five Truckers is, is, is good. It's, it's, it's really good. I mean, it's still his stuff. He's still there. Uh, but if you don't know the history, uh, there's a lot about it. You know, he was in the band. Uh, I think those years were the pivotal, really good years of Drive By Truckers. Um, they basically, it was a amicable split when he left the band, but it was pretty much, I think they kicked him out just because he was, uh, he had a substance abuse issue, um, and couldn't keep it together basically. And after that he got sober and just after that, his, his songwriting career just exploded. Um, just, he, he did so much good work and still putting out killer stuff. So that's kind of with Jason Isbell, but, uh, this is like a, a greatest hits, a compilation uh from 98 to 2009 I'll, I, I'll be listening to this a little bit it was traded in so i'll probably end up selling it. i'm not really into <clears throat> greatest hits 
unless there's a, <laughs> I say that, but there's a few, which I'm going to show later in the video. Um, but you know, I don't make a habit to keep them unless they're significant to me. And I've got a few that are that way and they're, they're coming up in the video. Uh, but this one is 2007, a blessing and a curse. This is the last album is bulls on with them. Um, I'm probably going to keep this one. There's a couple good ones on there that he wrote. Um, Daylight's a, a really killer Isbel song. Um, I really like it. So, <laughs> Drive By Truckers almost has like a, um, like, I feel like maybe it's because I'm just pro so programmed that I know Jason Isbel's music so much, but his songs are a lot different, I think. Um, and some, a lot of the other songs, um, are more, almost have like a Black Crows vibe to it, which is great. Like, I love the Black Crows. But I'm getting a little bit more picky about what I keep. And if it's something I'm going to, it's going to take up space in my house, I'm going to love it, you know. Because I've got so much good stuff that if I'm going to try to figure out what I want to listen to next, and I don't have much time because I, I don't spend a lot of time listening to records out here. Um, I'm going to pick something that's killer. I'm not going to pick something that's, uh, you know, so I'm not going to keep anything that's, uh. So this is a pretty good record. It's got some really good songs on it. Um, that is, it's got a couple good Ispel songs on it, but that one's the standout for me. Uh, this is another one, a big to do, and I want to give it a. I want to give Drive By Truckers a, a good, sh a fair shake. Outside of the Isabel stuff, I haven't listened to it at all. Um, even the Isabel stuff, I haven't listened to much. So I want to kind of. It's it's a band that I, I've been wanting to, you know, ease into, listen to some things, see how I like it. It's it's classified as like modern Southern rock, you know. So it's stuff that's, you know, it's cool. It's cool stuff. I I, I dig the sound of it. So. It's something I want to spend a little bit more time with, you know, to make a, make a good decision. Uh, this is another one. Um, what's this one called? Brighter Than Creation's Dark. All these were traded in on Saturday. So I've, I've been trying to, you know, listen to a couple of those and see what I think, see if it's, it's worth keeping. Comment your thoughts. I'd love to hear your opinions. Uh, this is another one. Uh, Ray LaMontagne and the Pariah Dogs. Guy Will and the Creek Won't Rise. This was, this is came out in 2010. This is a year me and my wife got married. And uh, we were both really into Ray LaMontagne. We went and saw him live uh, back then. And this was an album that we really, really liked. And at the time, uh, we were broke. And I just didn't, you know, pick up a copy of it on vinyl. At that time, I wasn't spending money on vinyl. And so I didn't have one. And now it's kind of gone up a little bit in value. It's worth like 40 bucks. I don't know. But I was also traded in on Saturday. So that's one I'll be keeping. It's a significant one for me. Uh, but I really like Ray LaMontagne. Really good songwriter, man. Just, uh, just phenomenal. Yeah. And then this is one, Young Marble Giants, that uh, I found in the Attic Dig. It, was, well, it wasn't that one. It was the one before, but it's the same guy's place. And uh, I had never heard it. You know, I'm not huge into punk and new wave stuff. And uh, picked out some things that I'd never heard before that I wanted to get some exposure with. And, and this was one that looks really cool to me. It's total impulse, but I did not know anything about it. But um, just grabbed it. And man, I've listened to the crap out of this. Like, like probably listened to it 20 times. So good. So good stuff. The bass on this is just killer. But the whole thing, really good stuff. Um, so the rest of the stuff I've had for a while just kind of what I've been listening to lately. Um, you guys don't hate me, but this, I've been listening to this album and I know I talk about this album too much. I'm aware how much I talk about this album, but it's just one that's sticking in my crawl, as my dad would say. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's lingering. I, 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 I'll put it down and then just pick it right back up and listen to it over and over again. I can't help it. Johnny Mitchell Blue. This is a this is a pretty cool German press of it, but um, lately I've been like I, I've been picking up guitar and playing guitar more, and I kind of learned a little bit of Case of You um, on guitar, playing it and singing it, and been singing it to my kids and um, just trying to get the guitar out more. You know, when the kids are young, it's it's hard to pull the guitar out and. And, but now they're kind of getting to the age to where they're really enjoying it and they're engaging and they're wanting to learn how to play. So I want that for them. I want them. I think they, both of my kids have an inclination to in music. Me and my wife both play music. So um, anyways, so I've been getting the guitar out a lot, singing this song a lot. And then just like every time I really listen to the lyrics, I'm like, dang it, that's a good song. 
case of you is it's climbing up there. It's it's in my top three favorite songs for sure. Um, just if you haven't heard the song, listen to the song. Brandy Carlaw does just an amazing cover of it uh, that I've listened to a few times here lately. It's just uh, I can't help it. It's one that I just keep going back. And there's very few records like that that I just listen to over and over again. This is just one. Oh my gosh! Every time, almost every time I hear it, I get chill bumps. It's just so good. Uh, but I remember the first time I heard a case of you, I heard somebody talking about it. I'm like, I don't get, it. I don't really get it. And then I listened to it, and I was like, it's just, eh, it's okay, because, you know. And then, as I I listened to it a couple more times, I really thought about, um, you know, I could drink a case of you and still be on my feet. Like it's talking about how, you know, you love someone so much, and uh, it's just like wine, like it's bitter and it's sweet. But you could, like, when you really love somebody, there you can't get enough of them. And that's, you, you know, that's kind of the whole premise of the song. There's there's light, there's darkness, there's realness. It's just such a good song. But anyways, I talk about Johnny Mitchell Blue too much. All her other albums are kind of okay for me. I got They're good. I like them. But that one's just, I can't put it down, man. I just can't. And that's one of the songs I've been obsessed with. Since I heard it, you know, since I sunk my teeth into it. Another one is this, you know, I talk about this too much too. Crosby, Stills, and Nash. I Helplessly Hoping is a song on there that I'm just obsessed with. I listen to it too much. So, uh, next next little segment um, I'm going to talk about is uh, just some comps, some compilations. Um, I was going through some records at the shop the other day, and I threw this one on. Um, this was Neil Young Decade, 3LP. Uh, I, this is my... I've had this since I was a kid. The one, this is one of the very few records that have lasted. All my purges. This is one that was so significant to me that I've kept it all, kept it all these years. Um, it's just this album. Uh, my uncle. So I was big, uh, big Leonard Skinner fan as a kid. You know, to be in the South and play guitar, you have to be. Um, and I remember we were listening to Sweet Home Alabama, and my uncle, who I don't have much of a relationship with, but. But we were sitting around and listening to it, and and uh, that that part, you know, hope Neil Young will remember us. Another man don't need him around anyhow because of the whole, you know, I don't know the whole controversy between Neil Young and, and Leonard Skinner. But anyways, and then um, you know, my my uncle was like, "You ever listen to Neil Young though? Because he's a lot better than Leonard Skinner." And I'm like, "What?" And I was like, "No." And, and I, in my mind. I didn't know who Neil Young was. I didn't, you know, I thought I got him confused with Neil Diamond. So I didn't know. And he's like, you do, you need to listen to Neil Young. Just go buy a Neil Young record and listen to it. So I, this was the first one I found. I was like, this is, looks like everything. And so it's a really good comp. Uh, and man, I just devoured this. I couldn't stop listening to it. So now, you know, those albums you listen to and you hear the next song coming up in your head when it, you know, before it comes this is, uh, it, I listen to it so much that when I hear those songs on his regular albums and it's not in that track order, it throws me off. You know what I mean? So that's a really great comp. If you want to get into Neil Young, that's how I did. And I've got two of those sitting in the shop right now, 15 bucks each. You know, it's a three LP. You can't beat that. That's how much they go for. It's not, you know, necessarily cheap. And this is another one in the same vein that, um, I had the CDs of this and I didn't even know they made them on vinyl, but this is, uh, Zeppelin, uh, early days and, latter days uh but you know listening to these uh early on i was a lot more drawn to the early days um and that was just a cd that i listened to so much and as it i got sick of those you know because i listened to it just over and over and over and over again i was like in the latter days i don't really like that much but i'll listen to it just because I'm, I'm, I'm worn out and then i was just like holy moly this is a whole nother thing like this is you know, their later work is a lot different than their early work, but uh, it's just, it's so good. Um, let's go through some mail. This is the mail time. Mail time or snail mail. Mail. Man. Mail. It's the new mail. It's the mail segment. Really need a better name. I need a name for the mail segment. I have not thought have not thought this through. This is one I got in the mail yesterday or the day before. Uh, Maria from Georgia sent me this really cool Grateful Dead book. Um, I showed my Grateful Dead video earlier, and I had this bootleg 
which is the same artwork as this book. Uh, so really cool there. Um, but this is a book called The Official Book of Deadheads. And she wrote me a letter, a really nice letter. Apparently she had shoulder surgery. Um, and while she was laid up in bed, watched a bunch of my videos, and she had two of these books, so she sent one. So thank you so much, Maria. It was a really cool book, all about deadheads. Got some really cool posters and different uh, paraphernalia in there from Grateful Dead shows. So here's a few things that I got um, during shutdown when the, when the shop was closed down. And you guys sent me some cool things. Uh, there's a couple more that I need to get. Like, I know one record's at the shop that somebody sent me. And then a couple more that I just didn't, I didn't mention, but... Um, that I've been bad about getting and, and mentioning in my videos, but here's a, just a group of them that I had that, man, it meant the world to me that you guys sent me this stuff because it was a tough few months when we were shut down. I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if we were going to stay open. So, so Colin Godfrey from North Dakota sent me some really cool ones. Uh, Sugar Shop, uh, David Jones, uh, Bugsy. He's got another record that's, uh, that's a little bit more popular, I think, but this one I haven't heard, so I'll definitely check that out. Robin Williamson and his Mary Band. Um, I don't know anything about this. Excited to listen to it, but it's on um, Flying Fish. There's a promo picture attached to the back. That's pretty cool. This is one I was most excited about, which I know um, Kenny Rogers and all, but this is one that I've not ever found. Um, this is the first edition. I think it's not too rare, but I didn't have it, and I needed it because just dropped in. Holy moly, that song's good. That's about the only thing that Kenny Rogers ever did that I liked. But that just dropped in to see what condition my condition was in. It's a tubular track. And then uh, first edition, second. And the Mason Williams Ear Show. So, Colin, thank you, man. That's a great that's a great box of goods. This is another bo box from uh, Mark McPherson. Um, had some really cool ones. This uh, Joe Eli, which i got to listen to. Uh, this is another Joe Eli. And then uh, Stephen Fromholz, which um, he sent me a long letter about these records. I'm going to sit and listen to those next time I got some time in the shop. But yeah, Mark, thank you so much, man. I appreciate those. And then Melinda Murphy, you guys probably know who she is. She has a great channel. Uh, she sent me uh, when I first opened the shop, which by the way, if you're watching this and it's Monday, October 5th, it's the one year anniversary of us opening the shop. So um, Melinda sent me a gift card and it got sent to the wrong address because I had the wrong address on my YouTube channel and um, it got lost and it was lost forever, like for a year. And then like just a couple weeks ago, it got rerouted and sent back to her and she sent it back to me, so I got it. So it was a good anniversary present. But uh, she sent me a gift card just to Chick-fil-A so I could take my kids out to eat. It was very nice. So thank you, Melinda Murphy. But anyways, uh, if you guys want to send me any drawings or letters or anything, I'm going to do a mail segment every week on my on my channel. So our address is below. You can mail that stuff. Um, also, if you, ever, if you have stickers, I put them on my fridge at the shop. There's a big fridge that we put all the stickers on, all that stuff. So... Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you guys think of the um, new segments and stuff. And uh, hit the subscribe button, follow us on Instagram, and check out some bloopers. This was our... Uh, uh, apparently, she had soldier... Soldier. Shoulder surgery. Um, apparently, she had soldier... Apparently, she had soldier... Apparently, she had... Apparently, she had shoulder surgery, um, <laughs> um, which isn't funny, but that's just. Apparently, she had 